is a, quite an experience right here. It's going to be interesting, but we're we going to give all praise to God anyway. Let us worship the Father, worship the Father, worship the Father of glory. Let us worship the Father, worship the Father, worship the Father of love. And we will glorify, we will glorify the Lord. And we will glorify, we will glorify the Lord. Sing your praise to the Father, praise to the Father, praise to the Father of glory. Sing your praise to the Father, praise to the Father, praise to the Father of love. And we will glorify, we will glorify the Lord. And we will glorify, we will glorify the Lord. Lift your hands to the Father, hands to the Father, hands to the Father of glory. Lift your hands to the Father, hands to my Father, hands to the Father of love. And we will glorify, we will glorify the Lord. And we will glorify, we will glorify the Lord. And we will glorify, we will glorify the Lord. And we will glorify, we will glorify the Lord. Any church say it? Amen. All right. This world's not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't be left home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home. Just up in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their song of sweetest praise drifts back from heaven's shore. And I can't be led home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't be led home in this world anymore. We don't have our prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time where we can finally come back together as a family in person, Lord. Please help us to just love this time and to make the most of this time that we have together. And in your son's name we pray, amen. Maybe may be seated. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground 
is sinking sand all of the ground is sinking sand wonderful merciful savior precious finger and friend who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men oh you rescue the souls of men you are the one that we and had this uh, story on his Facebook page the other day and I thought it was relevant this morning there was a large group of people gathered on one side of the group stood a man Jesus and on the other side another Satan separating them was a fence running through the group the scene set both Jesus and Satan began calling people in the group one by one each having made up his or her own mind went either to Jesus or Satan. This kept going for a time. Soon enough, Jesus had gathered around him a group of people from the larger crowd, as did Satan. One man joined neither group. He climbed the fence that was there and sat on it. Jesus and his people left and disappeared, and so too did Satan and his people. The man on the fence sat alone. As this man sat, Satan came back looking for something which he appeared to have lost. The man said, have you lost something? Satan looked straight at him and replied, no, there you are, come with me. The man said, but I sat on the fence. I chose neither you nor him. Satan said, that's okay, I own the fence. It's a weird world we live in right now. A world in the last few months where we have been asked to choose sides. Wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. Believe in the virus. Don't believe in the virus. Choose healthy over economic. Open your business. Don't open your business. In the last few weeks, even racial tensions. Choosing a side and at times being shamed if you're not speaking out publicly on social media. And yet, this morning as we gather around the table for the first time in many weeks, 
I want to remind you that there's really only one side to choose. And it comes because he chose us. He chose us over everything else. And at the end of the day, even though at times I've walked into Walmart with no mask on and the looks that I were given should have killed me faster than the virus, and even though we have struggled with decision making and the pressures of those decisions, at the end of the day, the only choice that will ever matter is the fact that he chose us and you have to choose him. We're reminded when we do this and we take this Lord's Supper each week that we have to take a look at ourselves. So the question I would ask is, what are you passionate about in your choices? Maybe you've rallied around the, the masks. Maybe you have belabored the point of economic disaster compared to virus. Maybe you have crusaded tremendously with the racial aspects over the past few weeks. But my question would be, are you passionate about your choice in choosing Jesus? Because when it comes to the end of our life, that will be the only choice that has ever mattered. Let's pray. Father, you chose to come to earth in the form of your son. He made the choice to leave you to spend time with us. And through that choice, he chose to die for us. All of that so that we could make a choice to be with you forever. Father, we're mindful of those choices this morning as we partake of this bread and this juice that represents his body and his blood. Father, for those times that we put other choices ahead of you, I ask for forgiveness. Father, instill in us a passion that we are feverishly passionate about you and your son. Because all of this other stuff is part of a world that's not our home. Father, help our choices each day to reflect the choice that we've made to follow your son. And let us ever be grateful for the choice he made to give his life for us. And all this we ask through his name. Amen. Let us all together stand. Hallelujah, praise Jehovah, from the heavens praise His name. Praise Jehovah in the highest, all His angels praise proclaim. All His hosts together praise Him, sun and moon and stars on high. Praise Him all ye. And his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted far above the earth and the sky. Let them praises give Jehovah. They were made at his command. Then for
Fire and hail and snow and vapor, stormy winds that hear him call. Let them praise his gift, Jehovah, for his name alone is high, and his glory is exalted. And his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. Maybe seated. Our text for this morning is the 146th Psalm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. But blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked, he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Say it with me. Praise the Lord. It is good to see you this morning. Do you know it has been exactly 83 days since we last met together? 83 days. It was March 15th. But we're back now. Things are a little bit different. Things are going to be a little bit different for a while. But it's good to be together in whatever capacity. Things are going to be a little bit different here, but some things never change. And one of those things is, I didn't sleep last night. I don't sleep on Saturday nights. Sometimes I don't sleep on Saturday nights because I don't have a very good sermon for Sunday morning. And yet, it does weigh on me some. Uh, But then there are other times that I don't sleep on Saturday night because I know that what I have to say on Sunday morning is significant. That's one of those reasons I didn't sleep last night. I'm glad to be back together in whatever capacity. And I'm going to tell you, for me, it's not a moment too soon. It's not a moment too soon because... All right, before I go into this, I know we have visitors here. Uh, The people at Highway know me, and they know this about me, that I'm a very emotional person. I'm a very passionate person. Um, And I'm a very transparent person. You know that, right? You've 16 years now. 16 years this month. Can you believe it? It's not a moment too soon for me because I'm angry. And I have found myself becoming more and more angry with every passing day. And I'm telling you, I know some of you have had weeks like this, but last week for me was a doozy. I mean, it really, it really was. Um, I had some people accuse me of some things last week that angered me to my core. Because I know that what they were saying 
lies. Have you ever had that happen to you? Now, you know, it was probably not just that. I, I realize it was probably a combination of things that, that got to me and, and made me so mad. Now, a combination of things like, you know, we've been locked down for nearly three months. People have died. The economy has, has tanked and, and churches have been shut down all over the country, many even still today, in spite of our precious amendments and rights. And then there's the George Floyd murder. A vicious and senseless act for which now we are all being made to suffer on top of the suffering. An innocent man died and other innocent people are suffering. <clears throat> now the good news is apparently the virus is not a thing anymore because of that. But the bad news is that some really bad people are taking advantage of a really bad situation to do some really bad things. And last week, I was attacked and lied about concerning both of those issues. So I feel like I was lied about. I also feel like I was lied to. I feel like I've been lied to by the politicians and the journalists and the keyboard warriors of the Twitterverse. One of my friends encouraged me this week to stop reading social media and start reading imprecatory psalms. Do you know what the imprecatory psalms are? <laughs> They're the ones where the writer begs God to take vengeance and he says things like, you know, uh, make his days short and his wife a widow and his children orphans, things like that. I didn't do that. You should know I didn't go that far. But that, that piece of advice reminded me of something I say here all the time, something I know you've heard me say, and that's this. There's a psalm for that. You've heard me say that, Cindy? There's a psalm for that. Whatever situation you or I might be going through today, there is a psalm in the book, the, the scriptures, that actually addresses that situation. And that's when I remembered this week, Psalm 146. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Psalm 146 is a hallelujah psalm. It's called that because it begins with hallelujah and it ends with hallelujah. Or your translation might just have hallelujah translated, praise the Lord. It's a hallel psalm, a psalm of praise. It's actually the beginning of the last section of the book. There are five sections in the book of Psalms. The last section begins with Psalm 146 and it's a closure to the entire Psalter. Every one of those Psalms, 146, 47, 48, 49, and 50, every one of those Psalms begins and ends with hallelujah. That's why James led us just a moment ago in hallelujah, praise Jehovah. That Psalm is word for word, Psalm 148. So this is a Psalm of praise, a, a hallelujah to the Lord. But here's the thing, when the psalmists write Psalms of praise, they do not praise God for kicks and giggles. They always give concrete reasons why you should praise the Lord, and it's no different with this psalm here. And so I want to show you this psalm this morning because this is a psalm that recentered me this week. And I think if you are feeling any way like I am, I think it will, I think it will recenter you too. Look at the psalm with me. Look at the first two verses. Verses 1 and 2 open with this call to worship. Praise the Lord. But notice something here. Even though this is a community call, even though the psalmist is calling the community to praise the Lord, did you notice he starts with himself? Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. He starts with himself before he leads in worship. He begins with personal introspection and dedication. Before the singer leads the song, he familiarizes himself with the melody. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. This is something I try to teach my preaching students. It's something I try to practice myself, that the preacher has to live with the text first. 
The preacher has to feel the burden of the text for himself before he tells you what you ought to be thinking about it and doing with it. And then there's something else here. Uh, this introspection and dedication begins in worship. Worship, whether it's in private or in public, is the place we get our minds right. Listen, everything that's going on out there, I want you to listen to me very carefully and I want you to understand what I'm saying. Everything that's going on out there, it's not real. I don't mean to say that the virus is not real. It's real. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the political narratives and the propaganda that want to push a position, that create the appearance of reality. It's not reality. This is reality. This is the real world. These stories, these songs, these people, these prayers, this God, this King, this is reality. That is rebellion. Do you understand what I'm saying? We come here to get our minds right. We come here to acknowledge who is the truth teller and the king because out there is full of lies and it's ruled over by the father of lies. So in worship, we come here to hear what is real and then we take it a step further. We come here to be reminded of who rules. Look it down at verse 3. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. And on that day, on that very day, his plans perish. It's tough to be lied about. It's also tough to be lied to. It's hard to feel sometimes like we've been told the truth about the virus about the protests. Our churches have been shut down because of the highly infectious nature of the virus, and many still are. And yet now with these protests, it doesn't seem to be an issue. But our churches are still shuttered in a lot of places. The protests are billed as the natural overflowing of a pent-up anger at injustice. Yet, pallets of bricks keep mysteriously appearing on street corners. The politicians and the journalists keep promising us a way forward. Yet, all they ever seem to do is take us in steps backward. And so I've heard a lot of people say, it's hard to know who to believe. It's hard to know who to trust. Well, this experience of worship reminds us who we can trust. This experience of worship reminds us of what is real and of who ultimately rules. And it's not us humans. Even the most powerful of us are, and I'm paraphrasing the psalmist here, just dirtbags. He says that there, it returns to the earth, right? Our bodies perish, our plans perish. We can't save others. Goodness knows we can't even save ourselves. Listen, there is only one being in all of the universe who can provide what it is we all so desperately seek. There is only one being in the universe who can heal all our diseases and right all the wrongs. Look at verse 5. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. 
See, I told you the psalmist never praises for just, just kicks and giggles. There are concrete reasons, and so it is here. As opposed to the princes and the propagandists who cannot be trusted, the God of Jacob can be. Neither politicians nor journalists can do a single thing to heal us from the viruses that plague us, whether they are COVID-19 or systemic racism. But Yahweh, the God of Israel, can. Why? Because He is the maker and the sustainer of all that is. He made everybody and everybody's body. Do you understand? He made everybody and every kind and every color in His glorious images. He knows how we're made. He knows our strengths. He knows our weaknesses. And only He can cure what ails us. Only He can execute justice. Justly. Only He can feed the hungry. Free the oppressors. Open the eyes of the blind. Lift up the downtrodden. Love the righteous. Watch over and uphold the sojourners, the widows, the, the orphans. Listen, given the notoriously deceptive nature of princes, why would we ever put our faith in them to heal us? God is the righteous judge. God is the great physician. And God is the powerful protector. I asked one of my colleagues one time why people were so dependent on the government to tell them what to think and how to act. And he said, Dev, when government is your God, that's all you've got. Well, church, that's not all we've got. And we've got to stop acting like it is. We've got the, the creator and the sustainer of the universe in our corner, and he reigns forever. Highway, your God reigns to all generations. Praise the Lord. And I told you there's a psalm for every situation. Whether it's the 83rd of lockdown, even when there are riots in the streets, and even when the murder hornets re are released or whatever else 2020 is going to bring our way. And I know you're probably wondering, where are you going with this? Well, here's the thing. There are two questions I have been asked repeatedly over the last 10 or so weeks. One for the first eight weeks and the other for the last two. <laughs> the first question is this, who can we trust? The politicians, the media, who are we supposed to trust? There's so much contradictory information out there. Who can we trust? And then here's the second question, and this is the one that has been coming up the last two weeks especially. What can we do? What can we do? How can we serve people in the midst of a pandemic, and how can we fight systemic racism and injustice? Well, I want to tell you what the psalmist told me. Here's the answers. Trust God and follow His lead. Trust God and follow His lead. I responded to the first accusation last week by saying, I know you don't like wearing masks. I don't like wearing them either. I get it. But at the most fundamental level, we do this out of reverence for Christ. We've been asked to do this so that we might protect those who are in our community. And part of our mutual submission that we talked about last week 
is to submit to each other out of reverence for Christ. We trust Christ and we follow his lead. And the answer to the second question, what can we do? I read about a God here who knows my body inside and out. And our God leads the way in justice. He will not stand for treating people badly for any reason, not the least of which because of the glorious kaleidoscope of the color of their skin. He does justice, and so his people do justice. He feeds the hungry, and so his people feed the hungry. He sets the prisoners free, and so we minister to prisoners. He opens the eyes of the blind, and so we bring health care and healing both to the bodies of our land and the streets of our land. He lifts up the bow down, so we lift up the bow down. He loves the righteous, we love the righteous. He protects the sojourners and the, widowless, uh, the widows and the fathers, and so we do too. Whatever the question is, these are the answers. Trust God and follow His lead. Let's stand and sing. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with still and with all who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey not a shadow can rise not a cloud in the skies, but a smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt or a fear, not a sign or a tear can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Good morning, church. It's good to see everybody here this morning.